another episode of SCFG Live, Science Club for Girls Live. I'm Hannah with Science Club for Girls, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Wow, a lot quieter today, Mr. Music. Must be listening to my feedback. Oh, is that a mute? Very cool. <laughs> Well, it's so great to see everyone again. And even more importantly, it's great to see Dr. Marbles. Let's bring him in. Marbles here. <laughs> How are you? Hey, Hannah. It's great to see you, Dr. Marbles. Great to see you. So happy to be here. Hi, scientists. Well, Dr. Marbles, we missed you so much last week. Please tell us what you've been up to. Oh. Did you really miss me? I did. I actually did. Oh, I'm touched. Things are quite quiet around here when you're not here. Oh, well, you know what I've been doing, Hannah? I've been getting ready for winter. I've been raking and I've been, you know, getting my house ready and, you know, it's going to start getting cold. We did a whole thing on change of seasons, remember? And we've got That's winter right. coming. Yeah, that's right. Very cool. Well, are you curious what you missed, though? Oh, yeah. I am curious. What did I miss? Well, last week we talked all about electricity. Oh, I love I electricity. I really do. I know. It's like light bulbs and all sorts of things that get controlled by electricity. I can't believe I missed it. I know. I know. There, we talked. Oh. It's a, and we'll come back to it at some point. Oh, good. Anyway, we talked about a lot of different things that are controlled by electricity and powered by electricity. Can you think of any, Dr. Marbles? Can I think of anything? What about what we're doing right now on a computer? That's a great point. That's a great point. In fact, we probably wouldn't even be able to talk to each other without electricity, right? Nope. It'd be very difficult. I know I wouldn't be able to blow dry my hair or use my TV or use my toaster, which I had a delicious breakfast this morning. And oh, yeah. that wouldn't have happened without electricity. I wouldn't be able to shave my nostrils. Ew. Yeah. That's awkward. All right, moving on. Yeah, well, uh, we talked more specifically about what electricity even is. And we learned that electricity is basically these super, super, super small particles that are on everything. And these particles are either negatively charged or positively charged. We learned that if they're the same charge, they will repel. And if they're opposite charges, they attract, which yeah. causes some really cool things to happen, like a balloon sticking to my hair and making it stand up. Have you ever done that? That's static electricity. That's what happens. That's exactly right. That's the version of static electricity. We also talked about a type of electricity called dynamic electricity, which is the constant movement of electrons. And that's what creates something like an electrical circuit that we use to turn on a light bulb. Hmm. Very cool. Well, I'm sorry I missed it. That's okay. Well, I'm glad you're back today because today we're gonna talk about something that I think you might enjoy. And that is simple machines. What? Very cool. Simple machines actually don't need any electricity to work and they're super useful because they make work easier by changing the direction of a certain force and who doesn't like to make work easier right uh <laughs> i do <laughs> i had a feeling you would my mother used to always say to me dr marbles you are so well she didn't call me dr marbles but yes. <laughs> she said you are so lazy <laughs> and I said, you know what? I'm not lazy. I'm just creative. And I'm going to make simple machines to make my life easier. That's a great point, Dr. Marbles. Creativity sometimes is really important. It's, yeah, cool. Yeah. Can you think of any examples of simple machines or things that you've used to make your life easier or your work easier? Mm. What about ramps? That's a great example. Tell us yep. a little bit more. When have you used a ramp? <sighs> Do I need to tell you this story? It's like one of the oldest stories in my life. 
I used to live in an old brownstone and we had four steps up to my house. One, two, three. Oh, I'm already exhausted. Whew, so what step. did I do? I got a board of wood and I lifted it all the way to the top step. And I was able to walk up without having to exert that much energy. I made a ramp. Very cool. In fact, yeah. that's a perfect example of a simple machine because you're making work a lot easier for you. Totally. It a lot of work to go up those four. You said four, right? Not 40. You said four? No. Uh, yeah, four. Okay. Those four steps would be a lot, a lot of work. Of and so by adding a ramp or like a piece of wood like this, it made your yeah. life a lot easier. Oh, 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 Hannah, I've got another one. Yeah? Wheels. Yeah. Yep. Like, a, instead of walking, sometimes I put on some roller blades and I just skate my way and it's so much easier. Wheels can make a simple machine. That's a great example. In fact, Dr. Marvels, there are actually six different types of simple machines and you've already named two of them. A wheel yep. and axle, which is exactly what you're talking about. And yep. a ramp is a version of an inclined plane. In addition to those two, there's pulleys, levers, wedges, and screws. So many things that are really simple, but make our life a lot easier. Very cool. Yeah. And Dr. Marbles, today we're actually gonna talk about two of these types, and those are levers and wheel and axles, because those are just my favorite, and why not? Yep. Very neat. Well, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the first example, so I'm gonna have you step away if, if that's okay. Oh. Hannah, I'm lazy. I'm not yeah. going anywhere. I had a feeling that was true. We'll see you soon. See ya. All right. So our first uh, experiment demonstration, we're going to focus on levers. And today, oh, wait, no, sorry. I lied. Huh. We're first going to focus on, yes, levers. Yeah, levers. No, wheel and axles. Yes. Okay. First, though, I'm going to take, I'm going to make, something like this. This is kind of like a ramp that we talked about. And I just made it using a cardboard box. And I have a little thing like this that's going to make it go down. And hmm, does this remind us of anything? What does this kind of look like? An inclined plane! That's right, it's an inclined plane. Thanks, Dr. Marbles. All right, now I'm going to take a clothespin just like this, and I'm going to try and push my clothespin down the ramp. Let's see. All right, well, it does go down, but I want to make it go down even faster. So, hmm, what kind of simple machine might I use to make my clothespin go down my ramp even faster? I think it's time for a prediction chicken. Good chicken. Prediction chicken! Hi, Dr. Marbles! Prediction chicken. Well, Dr. Marbles, we just rolled our clothespin down a ramp, or an inclined plane, as you said, and we saw that it moved down the ramp, but not as fast as I'd like it to. So yeah. I'm thinking, well, we need to make this work easier. So yeah. time for a simple machine. But the question yeah. is, what simple machine do we need? Huh. Well, you don't need a wedge because we don't want to, you know, break anything apart. Uh, definitely don't need a screw because we don't want to, we don't want this clothespin to stay in one place. Right, which a screw often uh, does to secure yep. something together, yep. And I'm not sure like a lever is going to be really useful because we're not lifting the right. clothespin. Mm, maybe a pulley because we need to right. move the clothespin in one direction, mm -hmm. except, wait a minute. We need to move the clothespin down the racetrack and not up. So, and we got to do that at an angle. So I think that leaves an, a wheel and an axle, Hannah. That's a great prediction, Dr. Marbles. Well, well very, very cool. Uh, well, uh, let's see. How do you, why, why do you think wheel and axle? Do you have any previous well, experience with that? Yep. Remember I said I used to rollerblade? Yes, I do well, remember that. Using my experience rollerblading down a ramp, I think we'll make the clothespin move fast down a ramp. Very cool. Well, let's give it a shot. 
I'll call you back soon. I'll be here. I have a feeling you will. All right, so Dr. Marbles has suggested that we use a wheel and axle to make our clothespin move faster down the ramp. So let's try it. We're going to basically build a clothespin car. And for that, we're gonna need a few different materials. The first thing you'll need is a clothespin, obviously. You're also going to need some bread ties. They look like this, they're like twist ties. You can definitely pick these up at the grocery store. You'll need two of those. You'll also need some wheels. For wheels, we're gonna use buttons. Make sure your buttons are about the same size because we don't want our wheels to be all wobbly and uneven. You'll need four buttons, all the same size. You'll also need a drinking straw like this, and you'll wanna cut your drinking straw into inch-sized pieces. You'll want four of those and some tape, and that's pretty much it. Okay, first we need to make our wheel and axle. So what you'll do is you'll thread your twist tie through one of the holes of the button and then back through the other, like that. Then twist your two ends of your twist tie together to secure the button. There we go. Just like that. Okay, now put a straw through your twist tie. The straw is really important because the straw will give us something to hook onto, but it will still allow the twist tie to move and the wheel to spin. And on the other end goes your other wheel. So same thing, thread it through one hole, back through the other, and then give it a twist to secure it in place. Great. Now we have one wheel and axle complete. One set of wheels and axle. All right, do that one more time to get your other wheel and axle. So again, thread it through, thread it through, and twist. Now if you don't have a bread tie, you could also use um, like a, um, what's it called, a wire? A wire would work really well, like a craft wire. Oh, I forgot my straw. Very important part. And then the other button. And you can also use buttons if you don't have the buttons with the holes and they just have kind of like a hook on the back. Those work too. You can always find buttons kind of laying around the house. Usually they're attached to like a sweater when you buy one. All right, cool. So now we have our two sets of wheels. It's time for the body of our car, which in this case is gonna be our clothespin. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tape our uh, wheels to our clothespin. I'm gonna put one set of wheels right up here at the top of our clothespin. Just tape that on. Might need a few pieces of tape to make sure it's really secure. And then tape the other set of wheels to the back of your clothespin. Just like that. Cool. And now your car is ready to go. All right, now it's time to test our car. So let's bring the ramp back and see if the wheels have made our work any easier. All right, let's take a look. Woo! I went off the, off the side of the desk. That's crazy. Should we have a little race with the clothespin with wheels and a clothespin without? Let's see what happens. Ready? One, two, three. Very cool. They look like they kind of went about the same speed, but this car with the wheels definitely went faster. The clothespin one stopped at the desk and the one with the wheels almost went off. So very cool. The wheels do make that work a lot easier. All right, now let's talk about the science behind this. Why are the wheels making the work easier? Let me switch my camera so I can look at you. All right, so why are the wheels making the work easier? Let's take a look. Well, remember, civil machines make work easier by working against a certain force. In this case, that force is friction. Friction is working in one direction, while the wheels of the car, that pushing force, help to work in the opposite direction, overcoming friction and making the car go faster. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, now that we've experimented a little bit with wheels, it's time to experiment with our second thing, and that is a lever. Levers look something like that. We're gonna make our own lever today. 
All right, so let's see. Here for our lever, oh, levers are really important. I'm gonna bring up that picture one more time. Levers are super important because they help to lift heavy, heavy objects that you wouldn't be able to lift with just the strength of your arms. If you push down on one side of the lever, it causes the other side to lift up, which there you go, lifting up those heavy objects. Levers are often used to lift up heavy furniture, uh, like couches, and they're sometimes used for fun too, like on a playground. Let's see if Dr. Marbles can think of any examples of levers that he's seen or experienced. Hey, Dr. Marbles. Hey, Hannah. Hey, so now we're now that we've done with wheels and axles, we're gonna talk about levers. And I'm curious Wait. if you've ever experienced an example of a lever. Wait, can I just say something? Yeah. I mean, I like wheels and axles. I okay. find them really interesting and fascinating, but I can tell you it took you a long time to explain them and I was standing right here the whole time. Oh, okay. So just keep that in mind, please. Oh, did you wanna come back in? Were you lonely? Kind of. Mm. Okay, well, next time. I Keep mean, I like them. I, I Don't get me wrong, I like them, but just okay. took a long time to talk about them. Sometimes science takes a while, Dr. Marvel. I know, I just want to be a part of it. Okay, I know, right, I know. Sorry. Sorry. Right, okay, well, now that you're well, back. What was your question? My question was, have you ever experienced levers or do you know of any examples of levers? Yes. Okay, please tell us. I'm still feeling a little sore. Dr. Marles, I'm sorry. I really- I know, I'm just kidding, I forgive you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my example of a lever and you're gonna find this crazy. Okay. So when I was a kid, like a teenager. Yeah. Oh, I love to sleep. Oh, did I love to sleep. So what my mother did is she made, oh, you have a picture of it. <laughs> I just found it, I don't know. <laughs> she made a giant lever. And that's what she used. She'd jump on one side and it would catapult me out of bed. <laughs> there I, can't, you I, can't, I can't believe you have a picture. <laughs> I can't believe that she had to do this. Oh my gosh. And that's my mother. Wow. I can see the resemblance. <clears throat> She's anyway, amazing. that's yeah. a perfect example of a lever, Dr. Marvels, because yeah. it made the work easier for her to get out of bed and for you to get out of bed. <laughs> I can't believe you have a picture. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you shared that example with us because that's exactly what we're going to make today, a lever. But we're not going to get anyone out of bed. We're going to kind of just make a, a, a smaller version. Levers are hysterical. <laughs> I don't know about that, but okay. All right, Dr. Marvels, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. I think he's going to be upset again that I had him go away. Anyway, now it's time to make our own lever. We're not going to make the lever that Dr. Marbles was talking about, but we're going to make a smaller, cooler version. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need, I'm going to switch my camera again so you can see what's going on here. All right, very cool. So the first thing that you're going to need is what's called a fulcrum. Now the fulcrum is a really important part of a lever because it goes in the middle of the lever and allows the lever to move up and down. And a fulcrum can really be anything that the lever can balance on. In this case, I'm going to use a old toilet paper roll and I've kind of folded it into a triangle shape, which is perfect for balancing because it gives that lever a spot to rest. Now for your actual lever, you can use really anything. You can use a ruler, you can use chopsticks, or you can use this paint stick that I found and I'm going to use. Okay, now to practice like kind of balancing our lever and moving weight around, I'm going to use these little teeny cups. Now you can use, again, any cups that you can find. You can use small little drinking cups, or you can use um, old coffee pods are also great examples. Okay, so what you're going to do is tape each of the cups to either side of the lever. And you wanna make sure that you use the same amount of tape on each cup, because you want the weight to be balanced. So you form those little donuts, and then put it on the bottom of your cup, and then put it right at the edge, like that. All right, I've measured out about, I think it's three inches of tape that I'm using on each cup, again, to make sure that it's balanced in the same weight. All right, now I have my little lever. Kind of looks like a seesaw, huh? Like if you go in the playground. Actually, a seesaw is a great example of a lever. 
All right, now here's the tricky part. You wanna try and balance your lever on your fulcrum. Let's see. Sometimes if you, have, if you get eye level, it will work a little bit better. Now, ideally, you wanna be right in the middle, but sometimes, it's hard to kind of get. Whoop! There we go. For a second, it was balanced, and that's because there's equal weight on either side. Our all that's there is a cup and some tape. We haven't added any additional weight to either side. But let's see what happens if I do add some weight. Let's try and get it a little bit more balanced this time. All that I'm doing is just moving the lever to try and get it to be balanced. All right, there we go. So let's see, for my weight, I'm going to add some pom-poms. And let's see what happens. One, two, three, and four. What happened? Well, this side of my lever went down. And it went down because there's more weight on that side. And so the lever tilted towards that side. But let's say I want to make it even again. What can I do? Let's see if Dr. Marbles has an idea. Hey, Marbles. Hey. hey. Are you? Pop pumps. <laughs> yeah. I love pop pumps. They're very cool. <laughs> yeah, um, I was hoping you'd invite me back. I, well, here you are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here you are. I'm glad you're back. And for, yep. for your favorite part, pom poms. I love pom poms. <laughs> okay. So, Dr. Marbles, I've added one, two, three, four pom poms to this side. And what yep. do you notice happened to my lever? Went down. Right. That's like that's like when my mom used to step on that lever and I she'd go down, I'd go up. Exactly, right? This would yeah. sort of be like your mom and this would be you like flying out of bed. Yep. But let's say that I want to make it level again. What uh, could I do to make uh, it balanced? You want to make it balanced. I do. Well, this is an easy one. You want to make something balanced? You got to do the same on both sides. So All you right. said four pom-poms? I did. Four pom-poms it is. Here we go, let's try it. One, One two, two, three, three, four. Ugh, let me see if I move it a little bit. You know what, Hannah, it might be awful. You gotta put it right in the center. I know. Yeah. Which is oftentimes hard to do, Dr. Marbles. Yeah. Because it's doing a good very job. Doing small good. movements that you need. Whoa, good almost, good. I was very, very close. But Dr. Marbles, you are right. In order to make it balanced, we do need the same amount of weight on either side. And the same distance from the fulcrum. That's a perfect point, yes. Yep. Because we want to kind of, I could obviously measure it, but I'm kind of feeling a little lazy right now. Um, but yeah, exactly. We do want it to be a little bit balanced. Now, Dr. Marbles, let's talk about how levers can make work easier. Kind of similar to like what your mom did. Let's say that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pom-poms on this side. Let's pretend these are super, super heavy rocks. And I need to lift those rocks up into this truck to then carry them away. We're back to balancing again. Right, but I also don't wanna lift these with my hands. So what could I do? Huh. I want well, this to be up. You could go to the other side. Yeah. And put in more pom-poms, which would cause the lever to go down on the heavier side, right. which would lift the rocks or the pom-poms and put them in the truck. That's right, let's try it. So that was eight, so now I need maybe nine? One, three. three. We're at four. Five. Four, okay. I'm just doing odds. Oh, okay. We're at five now. Five. That's an even. Seven. Well, that's seven, yeah. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Oh, Nine. sorry. Nine. We're getting Nine. there. Let's try one more. Do one more. Ten. One more. Oh, that might not be enough. Oh, we're getting there! Pop, 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 pop. Yay! And there we go! Oh, my gosh! That's now, awesome. it's important to know that this wasn't entirely even in the middle, so I probably yeah. next time should use a ruler and really get at the midpoint of the fulcrum. Mm -hmm. But yep, you need to be I in the middle. Point. Yep. Pretty Super cool. cool. Yeah. So the, a lot of a lot and a lot of people use levers to make work a lot easier because it can be pretty tiring to have to lift heavy rocks. So why not get other rocks to do the work for you? You know? 
<laughs> I love that. Other rocks. <laughs> Exactly. In fact, there are actually a lot of different examples of levers that you probably use in your everyday life. Well, that being one of them, getting out of bed, but we also use things like scissors. Scissors are a great example of a lever, and the middle of the scissor is actually the fulcrum. Pretty yep. cool. Wheelbarrows, fishing poles, even when you clip your nails, those nail clippers are examples of levers and fulcrums. Yeah. Very cool. So useful. So and for useful. trimming nostril hairs. You, use, oh, you use, what do you use? Like small scissors? Little scissors, little scissors. Very cool. Well, also I wanted to point out that most of the things that we use are made up of simple machines. And sometimes they're made up of more than one simple machine. Like a bike not only has a wheel and axle, but it also has a lever. And that gear area is also a pulley and there's even a screw. What? Very cool. Hey, Hannah. Yeah? It's really amazing, you know, that Often there's like different simple machines that make up the bigger machine, like the bike. Right. And underneath all of that, you got to know your math. Very I'm, true. I'm, I'm saying you've got to know your math. You got to know your physics. You've talked about physics. And those are the rules that simple machines abide by. Right. Very so true. math plus physics plus simple machines, you've got a bike. There you go. Exactly. So powerful. So powerful. Very, very cool. Well, Dr. Marbles, we've had a chance to look at a lot of simple machines. And I'm wondering if you can just, because you're so good at summarizing things, just yeah. summarize for us a little bit about, uh, you know, what are simple machines and why are they so important? Hmm. Well, simple machines, they take advantage, you know, of things like gravity. And they allow us to do work that would otherwise be really difficult like yeah. getting out of bed <laughs> <laughs> and they make it easy that's right and in some ways even though they're simple they're very powerful right very strong and so understanding simple machines and being able to use them makes you able to do amazing things and they're so simple very true hannah that's what i love about science science doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be mm, difficult. Science right. can be simple and really kind of beautiful in that way. That's true. And I think simple machines are a great example. I'm sorry I missed electricity last week, but really <laughs> glad that I'm here. I am too. Well, Dr. Marbles, although you and I are quite fans of science, science enthusiasts, we might not be total experts at simple machines. Yeah. And so, we had a chance actually to sit down with an expert of the machines, a mechanical engineer named Dahlia. Should we take a look at her interview? Totally. Cool. Let's learn more. Hi, um, could you please introduce yourself for us? Hi, everyone. My name is Dahlia Clark. I'm a junior at the University of Connecticut studying uh, mechanical engineering. And what is a typical day like as a mechanical engineering student? So now with COVID, obviously everything looks different, but um, I go through my day-to-day -day while going through classes. I have um, various math classes and engineering related classes, um, sometimes labs. Um, and I go through that day, um, go to my classes. Um, at the end of the day, I'll probably go to the library, kind of solidify what I learned in that day, try to you know fix up my notes. Um, and then I'll go off. Um, me personally, I'm involved in engineering ambassadors on UConn's campus. So uh, we do a lot of outreach. So um, during a typical day, I might have like a GBM, a general body meeting, where, you know, we talk to people on UConn's campus about various things engineering related. Um, or that day I might be doing outreach, um, might be doing a virtual Zoom call um, with a school, um, giving a presentation and, or a demonstration on some engineering concept. <laughs> and why did you decide to become uh, an ambassador? Um, honestly, because outreach is something very near and dear to my heart. Um, I love the mission of EA and we aim to like include we aim to like engage students in like stem related activities and specifically we're targeting like underrepresented groups so like more people that look like me because when i go to my classes i honestly feel like i look around and i don't see too many black women or women in general in my classes so like 
specifically me, I wanted to, you know, increase the diversity um, in the STEM field. So that's why I joined EA. I, it, the mission is very near to my heart. That's awesome. I love that so much, what you guys are doing. Um, and how did you get interested in engineering? So I was all over the place um, when I was in high school, maybe a lawyer, maybe a doctor, maybe a pediatrician. Um, so during my junior year, I kind of did an internship at a pediatric clinic, wasn't for me. Um, so I started talking to my brother and he's an electrical engineer and he's like, yeah, STEM, STEM, STEM. And I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, after a while, I, I started looking into it and I realized like engineering kind of breaks down like everyday you know concepts or like you know machines and it shows you that the world is very malleable and like you can change it um you can improve it we have a lot of stuff going on with climate change we have like so much space to improve the world and i feel like that's what really attracted me to engineering is that like the field in and of itself is like conducive to like you making a change in the world and so you said that there's a lot of directions with engineering. Do you know which direction you want to go into or what your dream job might be? I am a junior, like I said, and I'm hoping to concentrate in either aerospace and power and energy. Um, from my classes, I know a little bit about what that means to be like an aerospace engineer or just like mechanical engineering in that field. Um, but I'm hoping, honestly, I don't know what that really entails. Honestly, I've never been in a company um, doing these things. So I'm hoping honestly to get an internship this summer. I've been like working for that, applying to internships so that I can get a better feel for what it is I would want to do when I get out of college or like when I graduate next year. That sounds super exciting. What advice do you have for everyone? Um, my advice to everyone is the sky is not even the limit. Your options are limitless. Explore what you want to do, what you know, ignites some fire in your soul and follow that. Follow it and follow it and follow it. You can do it. Um, no matter what barriers may be in front of you, you can overcome. Reach out to people for help. Um, there will be someone, someone somewhere that will help you, bring you up, uplift you um, on your path. So like keep going, always strive forward. Is there anyone in particular um, who you really look up to or is like a mentor to you? So someone that I really look up to is Dr. Stephanie Santos, and she is someone who recently got their doctorate here at UConn um, in biomedical engineering, and I actually worked in her lab for my first semester, and she's just a woman who's also like highly involved in outreach and um, include and like um, getting diversity into STEM, and she's also like a an engineer, so she's someone that I look up to. Um, she's very positive, always has the right things to say. Will in a moment's notice, like look over your resume. Hey, you need like a life talk, like I got you. <laughs> so um, definitely someone that I really look up to. She sounds amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Of course, thank you so much for having me. Take care. What'd you uh, think? What did I think? I am blown away by Dahlia. I'm, I'm serious. She said something that just, I thought was amazing, Hannah. She what was said, that? The sky is not the limit. Yeah, I got that too. And, right? She said, go beyond that. And then she says that she's interested in aeronautics. I mean, Dahlia's gonna build a rocket ship and go beyond the sky. Right. Unbelievable. And yeah. not only is she going to make an incredible impact on her field, but she's also, an incredible role model. Yes. She said that when she went into classes, she didn't see a lot of people like her. And you know what? She's changing that. And I, I'm just really impressed. And I'm congratulating Dahlia. And it's really a pleasure to see her and to hear her. And her voice is really powerful. So yeah. that was really awesome. Yeah. I thought it was just amazing how she just, you know, you know, would come across a certain circumstance or certain situation and just do everything she could to try and change it, which I think is amazing. Yeah. So she didn't get discouraged. She just, you know, kept trying and thinking of new things of, and ways to solve situations. So and I love that quote that you brought up too. Yep. Amazing. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Dr. Marbles, I do have one exciting announcement and that is that next week is our 25th, not next week, sorry, our next episode is our 25th yep. episode on December Yay! 11th. Yay! Crazy. So it's sure to be a fun one. Special guests, yep. special themes. So definitely yep. check that out on December 11th. 
Lots of secrets. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm so glad you were able to join us today, Dr. Marbles. We missed you last week, but this has been another fantastic episode of yep. SCFG uh, 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 Live. Science Love for Girls Live. Bye. Bye.